Tinseltown doesn't seem to pay these things any mind these days. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things that Hollywood doesn't care about anymore. I am a genius. I see things that no one else does, and for it, I am rewarded with nothing but scorn and mockery. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the aspects of the entertainment and film industries that the folks in charge seem to put less value, to some degree or other, nowadays. You know what happens when they find it. It ends up my book again light. And guess what name I'm gonna suggest we start with when I find it a new home. <laughs> Number 10. Self-Contained Blockbusters It used to be that blockbuster films focused on entertaining us with the story at hand. A huge film with great effects or an epic scale was enough to satisfy viewers and executives. However, in the early 21st century, sequels and cinematic universes are all the rage, meaning that Hollywood is just as invested, if not more so, in selling us on additional movies to come. Welcome to a new world of gods and monsters. While these are, well, can be fun too, many of us miss the sorts of blockbusters that stand alone, since they often have a more unique identity. Something, isn't it? Yes, it is. Number nine, small mid-budget movies. Speaking of blockbusters, large budget films are also becoming much more popular in Hollywood, to the point where smaller budget films, or even those with a comparatively modest sum invested in them, are becoming less common than they used to be. <laughs> Come on, come to Papa. Blockbusters may have large amounts of money devoted to them up front, but they also yield more from the box office, as well as a lot more buzz, which is what makes them more appealing to executives. Yeah, but uh, it's, um, it's terrible. I mean, it's so sad. Smaller films are still made, of course, but not as often by Hollywood itself. So indie studios are more often rising to fill the gap. Please just let us purge. Number eight, relying on star power. For many years, Hollywood has used big stars to sell their films. What should I do now? Run, sir! Again? Yes! <laughs> Audiences are sometimes drawn to movies featuring movie stars they're familiar with, and some are or were big enough to act as the main draw to a new film. However, star power has waned of late. Mr. Morton, these things are complex. Yeah, I bet, I bet. While some stars are still charismatic or famous enough to draw audiences, the majority of actors simply aren't enough to put butts in seats. It may be that viewers have become more concerned with the stories of the films they see, or it could be a side effect of the downtrend of movie going as a whole. They threw me out and they locked every door back in. Number seven, stopping whitewashing. As progressive as many of its inhabitants are, Hollywood has been surprisingly lax about adequately representing minorities, especially when it comes to the casting of Caucasian actors in non-Caucasian roles, otherwise known as whitewashing. I had to, or more would have died. Despite the backlash surrounding several notable cases of the practice in the early 21st century, Hollywood seems reluctant or uninterested in addressing the issue in any meaningful way, and continues to whitewash with an unfortunate frequency. Uh, thank you, ancient one, for seeing me. You're very welcome. Although casting the best actor for the role is one thing, this can still be accomplished while staying true to the character's origins and by better representing a minority on screen. Number 6. MPAA Ratings The Motion Picture Association of America, or MPAA, is in charge of rating which films should be seen by which audiences. Not okay! Despite how draconian and arbitrary they can be, Hollywood has, until recently, been relatively attentive when it comes to rating films, as traditional wisdom holds that films that manage to skirt under the R rating can be seen by more people and thus make more money. Let's review the top five daydreams. Ooh, that looks that safe! However, several R-rated films have proven to be surprise smash hits as of late, skewering what Hollywood thought it knew about the system. In addition, fewer mass-market films aimed at adults are given G or PG ratings, creating a more homogenized range of ratings. Three, two, stupid! Worth it. Number five, the American box office. We're not saying Hollywood doesn't consider making money in America important. However, it's less important than it used to be. Whatever happens. Whatever happens. While Americans are going to theaters less than before, those audiences overseas are far more numerous, which has led many films to gain anywhere from half to 80% of their revenue outside of the United States. You see, your team is about to go up against the only thing they can't handle. What's that? You. 
This is also why many huge blockbusters these days feature simplistic plots, broad humor, and lots of action, as these things are not as easily lost in translation. Hollywood doesn't always make films just for Americans anymore, which, while laudable to some degree, does beg the question, why can't they try to appeal to everyone? We are all targets now. Number 4. Saving Big Movies for Summer Once upon a time, blockbusters were something saved for the summer. I could have been at a barbecue! Hollywood would hold its prized films for the summer to act as tent poles for their studios. Now though, blockbusters have become such big business that they are basically released year-round. I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. No, you don't. From a financial standpoint, this makes perfect sense. After all, with so many big names crammed into three months, the competition would be too fierce for any of them to make a profit. Spread out across the year, though, well, that means that everyone could potentially get a slice of the proverbial pie. You prefer pie or strudel? I really don't have a preference. Number three, reviews and critics. Although Hollywood still cares about reviews and those who write them at times, such as when poor critical reception before a release could hurt a film's profits, more of the time, studios are more concerned with what will make the most money and not with what will be the best story, even if it means pandering to the lowest common denominator. Should we wash our hands? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> with the glut of information available online, individual critics and reviews don't have as much power as they once did in the court of public opinion either which means filmmakers don't have to cater to them as much as before. Something doesn't smell right. It smells as right as it's ever going to smell. Number two, fans. To be fair, Hollywood has rarely, if ever, cared about fans. Fans of films and or their source material are difficult to please, perhaps more so than critics. I figured you'd be older and that I'd be able to see more of your face. All fans have different ideas about what they want to see in a film. Should it stick close to the original property or should it be free to do its own thing? All right, man. <clears throat> Thanks for stopping by. Well, I guess the graciousness has run out. How tolerant any given fan is to those two extremes varies wildly and is virtually impossible to predict, so Hollywood rarely tries. Instead, they almost always focus on what appeals to the average moviegoer. While this is understandable, it also fails to consider that fans are a built-in audience. Speaking of which... <laughs> Number 1. Telling Original Stories Nowadays, original films are few and far between in Hollywood. To the studio's ears, the word original is just another way of saying a film is untested, risky, or hard to sell. Hollywood loves sequels, prequels, interquels, remakes, reboots, and adaptations for one simple reason. They were successful before, so they're theoretically more likely to be so again. The only problem is that the cavalcade of rehashes and additions have left the industry and its audiences starving for new blood. And while adaptations add that after a fashion, it'd still be nice to see more original films. Do you want some of this? Are you just gonna 